Hey there and welcome back to Get Indie Gaming and to another episode in the series where we glance across the various shop fronts and showcase a selection of indie games, our hidden gems, you might have missed when they first came out. Coming up in this video we have a selection of precision platformers, puzzlers and to our minds the best indie game hidden gem we've ever featured here on the channel. And so with that, let's crack on with the best indie game hidden gems for this September 2020. First up we have Wildermyth, a game that came out in early access towards the end of last year and sadly, well it seems to have largely been ignored having gone under most people's radars, which is a huge shame. Honestly though, don't let the fact that it's an early access title put you off, as it looks, plays and feels, well every bit like a fully completed character centric RPG, with this one also having a few tricks up its sleeves in the way, unlike most of its contemporaries, it borrows and uses procedural generation and randomness more usually seen within dungeon crawlers and roguelikes. Everything from the character creation to its plot and storylines and overall dialogue trees are built and put together on the fly while the game unfolds and having gone back to look at this once again in the making of this episode, well all of it seems to work really rather well, as does the overall art style and aesthetic particularly the paper doll like presentation which matches and fits so well with the organic storytelling the game is able to offer. The combat and magical elements are also really well implemented with just the right amount of skill and tactical nuance needed without becoming too overbearing. Yes there are a few rough edges here and there and the game is expected to stay in early access until perhaps the end of the year or early next. If you only decide to pick up one early access game all year and you're a fan of RPGs then honestly, head over to this one's Steam page where you can find a link down in the description and in so doing, you can find out what you've possibly been missing. Moving onwards we have Wright, a game which came out this past July. As you can probably tell it's a precision based platformer, although you'd be forgiven for thinking this is yet another tough as nails, throw your controller against the wall in frustration kind of thing as it honestly isn't. Well, well yes it is hard, although it's nowhere near the same difficulty as let's say Super Meat Boy or some of the more challenging and taxing areas of Celeste. At the get go, well it kind of feels somewhat underwhelming from a challenge perspective. The first 10 or 20 minutes of the game feel really rather sedate, although in retrospect this feels well played by the developer with the initial stages acting as somewhat of a warm up for what's yet to come. Yes, when you get going right does become more difficult and you'll be needing a fine and deft touch with pixel perfect jumps, dashes and landings and so on, all facilitated by a sharp and precise control mechanic that feels beautifully responsive. While right might not add too much to this well trodden genre, it's a kind and well thought out play with it being one of the most accessible games of its type out over the last couple of years. Up next we have Crosscode, arguably the least hidden gem in this September 2020 countdown. That being said, we're pretty sure this will be new to some viewers and having yet to really feature it here on the channel, now feels like a great time to do so. Crosscode first came out in the summer of 2018 and more recently it made its way onto consoles in July of this year. This retro looking 16 bit era 2D action RPG borrows some things from MMOs with it doffing its cap definitely towards Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. For us, what works really so well is the amount that's gone into the character design and creation. Nearly all of them are bristling and brimming with charm and well written charisma, perhaps more so than some of the world building and plot lines they find themselves within. The overall gameplay is more puzzle based than usual in this type of game which really helps set this one apart from its contemporaries as does the artwork and soundscape which recreates what you might have heard from those games in the era with this one emulating all of them while also adding additional complexity and additional musical layers. It does come with somewhat of a steep learning curve although that's really all we can fault it for. If you enjoy your single player action adventure RPGs and haven't picked this one up yet then it's wholeheartedly recommended. At 
at number five. Inmost first came out in October last year, and it's completely split the small team here at Get Indie Gaming. In places, it's spectacularly impressive, particularly in the beauty of its pixel art and backgrounds, which offer something really quite profound. To be honest, it's mostly in what this game looks, rather than what it does, which finds its place within this countdown. While described as a platformer, there are plenty of sections that feel more akin to a point and click, and others where you're not really playing the game that much with it playing it for you. It's also exceptionally bleak and gloomy. Its storyline features pain, grief, depression, not to mention possible youth suicide and murder. It's all fairly heavy and comes with post credit storyline warning that if you feel you need to do this, well it's probably better to put that before the game kicks off rather than at its end. In any case, take from this what you will and be forewarned before and if you dive in. Up next, and one from February 2019, Globe Sweeper is one of those games the more you play, well the more you wanting to keep playing it, with it becoming very easily that little bit pleasantly addictive. It's a modern take on the old Minesweeper game that was pre-packed within Microsoft Windows OS from version 3.1, we think all the way to Windows 8, although in this version, all of the gameplay takes place on a sphere rather than a flat surface. Now the biggest downside of the game on which this one is based came from the aspects of the puzzling where it was completely random if you were successful and was little more than guesswork. Those of you that remember will also remember how rage inducing this could be. And while the same issue was there in early versions of Globe Sweeper, this has been updated down the line with what the developers called a guaranteed solvable mode, which took away any guesswork, meaning you couldn't blame anyone but your lack of grey matter or problem solving skills when things went all awry. We're thinking this will appeal to a small subset of viewers, and for those of you who do decide to give it a try, we suspect it might become something you just can't stop playing. Globe Sweeper is available on PC via Steam, and it's also available via Android and the iOS mobile platforms. Sit with me, stranger, and I will tell you of the Night's Watch. At number three, we have Game of Thrones, A Tale of Crows, which at the time of launch and as the video goes live is an Apple Arcade exclusive, which is kind of a shame. Unlike the show in which it takes its name, this game is really rather relaxing, with it being called an idle experience where things happen in the background without you really needing to kind of play it. It's been described by some as a modern take on the Tamagotchi kind of thing from all those years ago. You play as the Lord Commander of the Night Watch and has a gameplay similar to you might see in text-driven adventures. Much of the action happens at a slow and steady pace and it's a certain game, well, you can't really play it in anything other than short, sharp sections. It's not something you definitely want to spend hours over at a time. And in the real passing of real time days, it's something you can just keep on checking up in the moments of downtime. Visually, it's certainly outstanding on the iPad, and it's one of the most interesting of the recent launches across the Apple Arcade. Like so many others, he's hoping at some point this one makes its way onto the Switch, where it could find a brand new and vastly bigger audience. <clears throat> At number two, there is no game wrong dimension, has its roots in a game jam, although that's all by the by, and for some reason, well, hardly anyone seems to be talking about this utterly fantastic game that's not just a hidden gem, but a potential 2020 Game of the Year contender. We often mention in these rundowns it's kind of hard to speak about a given game because in so doing, would spoil so much of what makes it so great, and there's perhaps never been a truer example than this one. It is safe for us to say, however, this is largely a comedy-based point-and-click adventure that could be described as this year's Pony Island, it's extremely meta throughout, and it has so many laugh out loud sections with it needing you as players to think laterally and intelligently, where in some cases you really need some proper out of the box thinking. What also makes this one really exceptionally great, and that is an awful way to describe it, but here we are, is the accompanying commentary that taken in context, well it had us genuinely feeling for the protagonist and their troubles. You can find this one via Steam, where it came out in early August of 2020. 
At number one, Townscaper came out in early access in June, with it delivering one of the calmest and most enjoyable casual game experience of the whole summer just gone. The developer calls it more of an experiment or a toy than a game, and with its early access, they're going to see how players interact with it, thereby aiding which direction it takes and what new features might be added. As for the gameplay, well, the developer says there's not much of it, and, well, that's kind of true, although underneath it there sits a complex algorithm that turns colours and blocks you place within an irregular grid into houses, arches, stairways, bridges, and plenty more depending upon the configuration. It's really a kind of procedural art kind of thing, and something we've played with and built numerous iterations of towns just for the sheer pleasure of watching it all unfold before us. With its visuals and ambiance and virtually no background music, its overall simplicity gives it a strength with oodles of replayability. So which, if any, of these games tickled your fancy, so to speak? Let us know down in the comments, and while you're here, if you liked the video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you have yet to do so, making sure you enable all of the notifications so you don't miss out on any of our videos. We upload at least every Wednesday and Saturday, and a subscription is the best way of staying up to date with all of our indie game related content. Many thanks for watching, we'll see you all again here next time on Get Indie Gaming.